the last thing that I talked about was how taking my son from me, it sounds really horrible for me to assume or to even say anything that sounds like I'm saying taking my child from me is worse than taking the child away from another person. And that's not exactly what I mean at all. But I'm not going to apologize for what I've stated because in a very real sense it's true. In the, in the idea that even for me, if, if I'm not comparing myself to another person but just comparing my, me to me in possibly different um, scenarios. If I had, if I myself, if I had lived, you know, um, babysat a little bit here and there, but not that big of a deal, and then went off to college and fell in love with somebody, got married, and at some point I started having kids, and then all of a sudden this horrible, devastating thing happened. You know, we um, were not aligning correctly with the right political party. Who knows? And so let's say... Someone in, and this happens to people who are targeted by CPS. Sometimes it becomes a um, personal, vindictive method of going after someone's kids. And I don't believe that my son was just taken for, from me be, for research reasons. I believe that it was to punish me for being a whistleblower and for reporting crimes. So, however, let's say, you know, I'm, I have my, I'm married and I have my child taken by CPS because someone makes a false accusation that maybe they, they are saying that my husband is abusing this child. That whole entire situation is horrible. And I, um, and the only thing, the only, the only difference that I was making is that if um, if that was this, the case, and, and, and actually, you know, I think what it comes down to is societal sympathy in some ways, because for some reason, people have a lot more sympathy, I think, for that kind of a scenario, actually, where it's a husband and wife, because I think men and women, the majority of our um, population has gotten married. Or they, or they get married, and they have this connection to others who are married. So it's easier when when two people marry and they form this union and then start a family. A lot of people who are married envision that the idea and the reason that they got married was to start a family, even people who are, you know, they might shack up and live together for a long time. Typically, it seems like they decide to get married when they decide they both want children and that they think that might be the best thing for their child. So there's this, I think, inherent societal sympathy for, um, for a man and woman, especially, who have their a man and woman in marriage who have their child taken away from them. And it gives this idea of, you know, the suffering of the man, and then the, the men can identify with that and imagine. And the women the married women identify with the idea of, I can't believe that that poor, that her husband has to suffer in that way. And then the married men who are married to women, they probably can think about how this married man's wife is suffering and think, gosh, I'm so glad that didn't happen to my wife, and I can't imagine what that would do to our whole family. So I think it's easier to frame sympathy with the idea of a family unit being targeted. And for me, so if, if I had been married, actually if I had been married, I don't believe it would have ever happened because this country and our society still puts a very high premium on marriage and um, they don't mess with you as much because even if, because it's, it's sort of like having a, um, a witness with you 
a lot of the time. And even if you're both on the same side and whatever, it's it's just harder for people to target you. So when I was a single mother, 